Korea refers to the involuntary dance-like movements that some people with Huntington's disease have. Um, like other um, patients with other kinds of involuntary movements, the, the symptoms may range from being very mild or almost non-existent to being very severe. In addition, one or another patient may be more or less aware of the chorea uh, or more or less bothered by the chorea. Um, I always like to say that the patient gets two votes and the family only gets one. Um, if the chorea is mild or moderate and really isn't bothering the patient, it may not need treatment. If the chorea is quite severe and they're falling off the chair or banging into things and getting bruises and cuts, then it probably does need treatment. Um, if the patient is unaware of the chorea, however, but it's bothering the family, I try to counsel the family not to worry about it. In terms of treating chorea, we really focus on uh, different ways to essentially alter dopamine in the brain. And so the idea is that chorea comes from uh, an, an impaired dopamine system such that you either block the dopamine using medicines that we conventionally refer to as atypical antipsychotics, for instance, um, Risperdal or, or Risperidone or Haldol, Haloperidol. Those are two kind of big examples, but the list could go on to things as uh, old as Thorazine or um, other kind of newer things like Invega, which is a, a monthly shot that a person may get. But the idea is that you're blocking the receptors that the dopamine is acting on. The other way one can improve uh, chorea is by re reducing the release of dopamine. So if you think of atypical antipsychotics as the blocking of where the dopamine is acting, you can think of medications that modulate where the dopamine is being released as another way to improve uh, chorea form movements. And the most prototypic example of that is a medicine called tetrabenazine. Uh, it's also known as xenazine, uh, and there are newer forms of that uh, coming out uh, in the near future. And the idea between, behind these medications is that they actually prevent the dopamine or, or control the dopamine release such that a person doesn't have a lot of chorea. The other important thing to remember about chorea is that it can be a lot worse when a patient is anxious. And so, for instance, if a patient is going to a dinner with an extended family and they're very self-conscious about their recent diagnosis of Huntington's disease, you'll often find that that chorea will really amplify and spouses or uh, loved ones will note that the patient, you know, at the dinner table really has a lot of problems with uh, extra hyperkinetic movements such that they can't pull the spoon to their mouth or they can't cut their uh, food with a knife and fork because their movements are so uh, increased. And so because of that, we often use medicines to try and reduce some of the anxiety associated uh, relations with, uh, with, with chorea. For instance, a person may take a benzodiazepine like clonazepam or diazepam or any number of the benzodiazepines to try and reduce some of the anxiety that periodically comes with, with socially uh, uh, embarrassing or socially awkward situations and that can also improve uh, chorea.